Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. And these, some of the surah which stand Surah Al Hashr. And here we see uh, in Juz number 28, short surahs are there. A very beautiful surah. Surah Al Hashr. Let's see, it's a Makki or Madani surah and little bit detail about it. So here, Surah Al Hashr. Hashr, uh, this surah is again short surah, 24 verses, surah number 59. And we are doing Juz 28, Fahmud Quran. Period of revelation for Surah Al Hashr. The surah was revealed after the battle of Banu An Nazir. All traditions agree that this battle took place after the incident of Bir Mauna and historical it also well known that the incident of Bir Mauna occurred after the battle of Uhud. Yes. And the major uh, things discussed in this are Jewish tribe of Banu and Nazir is given the order of exile for their uh, mutiny against the Islamic state. Distribution of the belonging of Banu and Nazir. Jews and their background. See commentary like you know how good qualities of true Muhajirin immigrants and good qualities of the Ansar. There is a tent of Yathrib Madina. Hypocrites conspiracy with the people of uh, book Jewish. Let each should see what is sending for the hereafter. The Quran was sent down upon a mountain in the end, we'll see this ayah, it would have crumbled into pieces from the fear of disobedience of Allah. 16 attributes of Allah in three verses. The God, the knower of the unseen, unseen, compassionate, merciful king, the giver of peace, granator of the security, guardian, almighty, irresistible, supreme creator. And most of us has memorized this. So the theme of the surah is an appraised of the battle against the Banu and Nazir, which can be summarized. There's an admonition to take heed from the fate they had just witnessed in the fall of Banu and Nazir. And also exception to the law relating to war uh, in initiated guidance is provided as how the lands and the properties and also the last section is an admonition for those people who profess to have affirmated faith and historical background of Jews in the Medina. In order to understand the subject matter of the surah, it is necessary to know the historical Jewish background and in Medina. And this, inshallah, uh, we have uh, detail of this in Talimul Quran detail. There you can. Inshallah, listen to that. Here we are doing short summary. Let's begin the surah. Surah Al-Hashr starts with Sabbaha. That is called Musabbihat. And this surah also starts with Sabbaha. And we have seen in the previous Jews also. Sabbaha, Surah Al-Hadid. Yes. Sabbaha lillahi ma fi samawati wa ma fi al-ard wa huwa al-azizul hakim. Whatever is in the heavens and whatever is on the earth exalts Allah and he is the exalted in might and wise. Again, Allah's tasbih is mentioned over here. So, Allah's tasbih is so important here. Prophet ﷺ said, some words that are repeated are such that one who says them is never ever deprived. What are they? Subhanallah, walhamdulillah, wala ilaha illallah, wallahu akbar. The one who says this word, then he is never ever deprived. How many times does he have to say them? 100 times. So anytime some deprivation in his life bothers you, do tasbih, Allah will fill you with contentment. We, we want contentment and peace, isn't it? It is he who expel the one who disbelieve among the people of scripture from their homes at the first gathering. You did not think they would leave. They thought that their fortresses would protect them from Allah. But the decree of Allah came upon them from where they had not expected. And he cast terror into their hearts. So they destroy their houses by their own hands and the hands of the believer. So take warning of the people of vision. We learn that in Medina, there were several Jewish tribes. When Prophet ﷺ migrated there, one particular tribe 
the banu nazir initially they had a pact with prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and with the muslims binding upon them to side with the muslims and not be treacherous and part of the treaty was also that if people of madina they happen to commit a accidental murder then blood money is going to be shared by everybody so what happened instead of abiding by this contract by this treaty they attempted to kill prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam when he went to them in order to ask them to contribute in the blood money that muslims had to pay the circumstances circumstances that basically led to siege where this banu nazir they had to lock themselves in fortresses and eventually they were expelled from the city and when they were expelled from the city they were allowed to take with them whatever they wanted so what they do they took even the door frames and the window frames of their houses they destroyed their houses emptied their own houses allah says take a lesson o people of vision o people who see take lesson from this what is the lesson allah subhanahu wa taala gives people many blessings but if a person is continuously is ungrateful using the blessings against allah and his messenger and specially oppose the deen then allah will take re- revenge from him in a way that is very subtle and unknowingly without even a person's control those blessing will be taken away so we see over here that banu nazir were established in madina living there for many many years for decades and they had fortresses strong houses strong structures and buildings but what happened everything was taken away from them when when they oppose allah when they left the deen what happened is that we leave the deen for the sake of dunya it happens right sometimes so we lose the deen and allah takes dunya as well so person is left with nothing no deen no dunya these people had the scripture prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam came to them but they reject prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam apparently they made a pact with him but behind him they try to hurt him so allah took away their populated homes can you imagine your own house breaking it can you imagine taking everything out remember that as muslims our izza is with the deen our glory is with the deen our comfort is with the deen it shouldn't be that when things are easy we follow the deen as soon as the things get difficult we leave deen ramadan comes oh we going to be good muslim ramadan goes away oh oh i miss the salah i don't even fast you know a muslim can't be that way you have to be obedient and a humble servant of allah subhanahu wa taala all the time whether it's ramadan or not and if not that allah has decreed for them evacuation he would have punished them in this world and for them in the hereafter is the punishment of the fire allah's will was that they be exiled at this point and later on they should be punished and this is what happened later on prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam also conquered khaybar zalika bi annahum shaqu allah wa rasulah this is because they oppose allah and his messenger and whoever oppose allah then indeed allah is severe in penalty and number 5 whatever you have cut down of their palm trees or left standing on their trunks it was by permission of so he would disgrace defiantly disobedient you see linta this is mentioned over here lina tin is also a name of lina is basically fresh lush healthy date palm tree and believers is also like a date palm tree and what happened was that during the siege the muslim they had to cut down some of that date palm trees by because the orchards they naturally protected the 
fortresses from the sides. So they had to cut down some of the trees. First of all, in order to weak the hearts of Banu Nazir. Because these trees were like their most precious belongings. These trees were hundreds of years old. Some of them. And it takes many years for a palm tree to be at age when it produces fruit. So when the trees were cut down, what happened? The heart of Bani, Banu Nazir, they sank. They became weak. And eventually, Muslims were able to launch a proper assault on them. And eventually, Banu Nazir, they surrendered. But you can imagine there was so much noise over this. Oh, Muslims, they cut down date palms. You understand? All the objects started. Well, the Banu Nazir were trying to kill Prophet ﷺ. That was not a problem for them. You understand how, how their thinking is? And it happens today also. Muslim makes one mistake and it's not even a mistake, but it's blown out of proportion. So Allah defends the Muslim over here. You understand? Okay. And what Allah restored of the property to his messenger from them, you did not spur for it. In an expedition, any horse or camels, but Allah gives his messenger power over whom he wills. And Allah is over all things competent. So eventually, then Banu Nazir were expelled, the properties, what they left behind. Of course, they could not take their land with them, isn't it? They could not take their trees with them. If they could, they would as well, but they couldn't. So they had to leave it behind. And this fell into the hands of Muslims. Since this was a different kind of gain and this is called Pai. Okay. And the law concerning it was also different from Ghanima. You understand we discuss detail in Talimul Quran course, Pai and Ghanima. Ghanima is that which is obtained in the battlefield. Fai was something that was the result of enemy surrender. You understand now? Okay. And what Allah restored to his messenger from the people of the towns, it is for Allah and for the messenger, for his near relatives and orphans and the stranded traveler. So that it will not be a perpetual distribution among the rich from among you. Because you see, Ghanima would be distributed among those who participated in the battle. Large proportion would be given to them. But what about those who could not go to battle, who were weak? So Allah says, now this is fine. It's not going to you. It's going to the entire community. You understand? Everybody will have the fire now. Otherwise, the wealth will be concentrated with just a few people. So, Allah wants everybody to have it. And whatever the messenger has given you, وَمَا آتَاكُمُ الرَّسُولُ فَخُزُوهُ وَمَا لَهُمْ كُمْ أَنْهُ فَانْتَهُ Take and what he has forbidden you, refrain from and fear Allah. Indeed, Allah is severe in penalty. So, any command the messenger gives you, take it. Not just the Quran, but anything besides that also. What should you do? Obey the messenger because it's coming from the messenger. Allah is telling us, accept from messenger. And those who do not, in Allah is severe and penalty. The punishment is severe. Why the punishment for disobeying the Prophet? Is there a punishment for disobeying parents? Is there? Yes. Prophet ﷺ said, Allah has forbidden disobedience to mothers. We learn about the people of our, like you know, when, when we learn Arab, there, how some people will be prevented from entering Jannah. You remember that surah? Why? Because on the one hand, they did great works like jihad. On the other hand, they disobeyed their parents. So their matter will be deferred. You understand? Their matter will be delayed. So if disobeying parents is a sin, what do you think about disobeying Prophet 
in his status not greater than that of our parents? No. First is Allah, then Prophet We are not comparing with the parents to Rasulullah No. First status of Rasulullah then comes the parents. So disobeying Prophet is not a small thing. Remember that. There's a hadith. Prophet said, if I forbid you to do something, keep away from it. If I order you to do something, then do it. As much as you can. The five meaning this particular booty that was acquired, Allah says this. Okay. For the poor immigrants who were expelled from their homes and their properties seeking bounty from Allah and his approval and supporting Allah and his messenger, there is also a share those who are truthful. So Allah calls them truthful. And the hypocrites, what they are called? Liars. And also for those who were settled in Medina and adopted the faith before them, meaning some for the Ansar, also some Muhajirin and Ansar, the love who emigrate to them. So here Allah is praising the praising over the people of Medina and Muslims of Medina, the Ansar, they love those who emigrate to them. So and find not any want in the chest of what the emigrants were given. Meaning, if the muhajirins are given something, the answer don't mind. Does it ever happen with us that somebody is given a gift? We are not given. How do we feel? Extremely angry, offended. But look at the answer. Because they had their homes in Medina, right? And muhajirin had left everything in Makkah. You remember Muhajirin, they did the Hijra, they came to Medina, everything in Makkah. They have come empty handed and the Ansar have shared their wealth with them. Subhanallah. But of course, when somebody is sharing with you, it's not the same as having something of your own. You understand that? So isn't it? So this is the time when Muhajirin were given and Allah praises the Ansar that they did not mind at all. And instead, what do they do? But give them preference over themselves, even though they are in privation. So, meaning the Ansar are not millionaires. They themselves are in need. You understand? They don't have that much. They are also hand to mouth. But when it comes to their need and the need of Muhajirin, who is it that they give preference to? To the Muhajirin. This is deen that one sacrifices by leaving his home and other sacrifices by giving his home and preferring others over oneself. And without this feelings, remember this feeling of mutual love, mutual support is for who? Islam. How will it spread our efforts for deen? How will they prosper? This kind of love and bounding is necessary, sacrificing for each other. Prophet also sacrificed what he needed for others. And there are so many examples. His life is a testament to that. If he wanted, he could have lived a comfortable life with Khatija Radiallanha. You know, with his family, he could have. No, but he didn't. We learn that a woman once brought the uh, Buradatin, this this is a reported in Sahih Bukhari. A woman once brought burda. It's basically a square piece of cloth having a very beautiful edging. And she said that, Ya Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Allah, I have woven this with my hands for you to wear. She made with her own hands and she gifted. This shows the Sahabiyat how um, they, they respect and love Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi took it as he was in need of it and he came to us. Sahaba are saying he came to us wearing it and he was wearing it as a waste sheet. You understand as a waste sheet? Meaning he had worn it as a iza, as a lower garment. One man he said, Ya Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, this is so beautiful. Give it to me please. And Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam agreed to give to him. He sat with the Sahaba for some time and then when he returned home, he folded the waste sheet and he sent it to the man even though who was in need of it. You understand how he gave it 
because he like it, he give it. And sometimes we do the same thing, isn't it? If somebody likes something and we want to give it to the, them as a gift and we give it. That's the sunnah of Prophet So the people said to that man, why did you do that? Why did you ask Prophet for that shawl? You know that he was in need of it and you know that he would never ever turn anybody's request down. So why did you ask him? You shouldn't have asked him. And he said, by Allah, I only ask him so that it would be my shroud when I die. Subhanallah. It would be my shroud when I die. Look at the love with Prophet ﷺ. They loved them so much. And he also justified he wanted that when he dies, he buried. He buried in a garment that Prophet ﷺ once upon a time born. That's what he wanted for himself. But at the same time, Prophet ﷺ was in need. So many times it happens that people ask you for something. They don't know what you are going through. They don't know what you are. But do you sacrifice it? Is it? So same thing, how they sacrifice. So always give, give, give. Always you want to give. And whoever is protected from stinginess in his soul, it is those who will be successful. Shoe, whoever is protected from shoe, stinginess of his soul, who will be successful, shoe. It is extreme greed, extreme stinginess to want something very badly and to want it so badly that a person does not want to give it away he does not want to share even a little bit so whoever is protected from shoe allah says he is successful and this means that if a person is living with shoe can he be successful never ever so ask allah to protect you too from shoe this should be one of our duty like you know stinginess what is shoe it's not the english one talking about the stinginess prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said Stinginess and faith, stinginess, bukhal, shu, shu henafs, and iman, faith, will never be combined in Muslim heart. Stinginess and iman, selfishness and iman, they can never be together. Have you ever seen people, they do stinginess even for calling the name, even for small petty things. I'm not talking about money or any bigger things but even for small petty things. So stinginess and faith can never be combined in a Muslim's heart. How Muhajirin and Ansar, like a brothers and how they share the things, but look at ourselves. We don't do with the kindred and Zal Qurba and so on. The list is endless, but we don't even do for the immediate relatives I'm talking about. What about the others? Prophet ﷺ also said during a khutbah once, save yourself from show, means stinginess. Save yourself from this greed and stinginess for those who were before you are inhal inhaliated. They were destroyed because of show. It ordered them to be stingy and it ordered them to cut off the relationship with those who were nearest to them in the relationship and they cut off and it commanded them to sin so they sin they disobeyed Allah and so this show something very dangerous so in this you know shoe henafs when talking about cutting off relationship with the cell korba and kin and kin so what happens when your own relatives don't share the things which you are supposed to you have the right to what happens your relation get destroyed because of shoe because they have that stinginess in their heart they don't want to share it like you know happiness or anything in their heart which they want to share they don't share with you they share with the other people they don't share with the immediate relatives whether siblings or parents or anyone because they are stingy in their heart so it means stinginess and iman can't be in the same heart so it happens, believe me, in the immediate relatives, it is so common these days. They have stinginess in their heart. They share the things with everyone except their own relatives, except their own near relatives, except their own parents and so on and so forth. That is the stinginess.
وَالَّذِينَ جَاءُوا مِنَّ الْبَادِهِمْ And there is a share for those who came after them, meaning the believers who will come afterwards, later generation of believers, saying, رَبَّنَا اغْفِرْ لَنَا وَالْإِخْوَانِنَا الَّذِينَ سَبَقُونَ بِالْإِيمَانِ وَلَا تَجْأَلْ فِي قُلُوبِنَا غِلَّا لِلَّذِينَ آمَنُوا رَبَّنَا إِنَّكَ رَعُوفُ الرَّحِيمُ Our Lord, forgive us and our brothers who preceded us in faith, put not in our hearts any resentment, غِلْ towards those who have believed our Lord, indeed your kind and merciful. Very beautiful dua in ayah number 10, Surah Al-Hashr. You see this, you see the dua that is mentioned here. Oh Allah, forgive us. And also forgive those believers who become Muslim before us, who did good before us. Don't let there be in our hearts any resentment, any ghil, any bad feeling for another person another believer especially when we think of people of iman we think of sahaba righteous knowledgeable very righteous people naturally you will have love for them why because you don't know them you haven't met them if you have met with them you sat with them you live with them then because they are human beings there would be things that would get annoyed by you the real test is what the people that you are living with, Allah Zina Amanu, are all those believers that you are living with that we are working with, we are studying with. Do we have frank over for them? Like resentment for them? Do we have ill feelings in our hearts for them? We have to check ourselves. You see, any person that irritates you, and there are people who irritate you, annoy you. And then how is it possible that you don't get upset or, you know, you change your mood? So we learn in this surah many etiquettes. When you make space for others, Allah will make space. Same thing. Make space. Allah will make space in your heart. You see some relations, you have to accept them. Like uh, in, in your job or uh, in your school, like where your children going, there's no choice. But when it comes to relatives, uh, there also you have to make compromises. Because they are not your choice. That was given by Allah subhanahu wa ta It's a test. So what you have to do? You have to sabr. Because for what is the difference between friends and relatives? Friends, it is your own choice. But relatives, it's not your choice. Allah has given you and that is your test. How you behave with them. Atas biruna, Allah is testing. So uh, for that we need to make dua also. What a beautiful dua Allah teaches us in the Quran. So memorize this dua. Very beautifully mentioned. Ayah number 11. Have you not considered those who practice hypocrisy? Saying to their brothers who have disbelieving among the people of scriptures. If you expel, we will surely leave with you. We will not obey in regard to you, anyone, ever. And if you are fought, we will surely aid you. But Allah testifies that they are liars. These people are not sincere to Allah. They are not loyal to him and they are not loyal to his messenger. Then such a person, his loyalty, loyalty is for nobody. Even those whom he says that they are his friends. This is basically about Abdullah bin Ubay who went and told to Banu Nazir that, that stay here. He is saying, okay, you stay here. You don't need to go anywhere. Basically, initially, Banu Nazir thought, you know, that you know what Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is serious. We will, we should go. They said we will go. You know, but what happened? Abdullah bin Ubay went to them and he said, "Oh yo, no no, you don't need to go. I will support you. I'm with you. I, I got to cover you and you know so on and so forth." So when they were in need, Abdullah bin Ubay was nowhere to be found. He didn't show up at all. So that's what mentioned. 
If they are expelled, they will not leave them. If they are fought, they will not aid them. And even if they should aid them, they will surely turn their backs. Then thereafter, they will not be aided. And this is the reality of fake friends. Like, you know, the false people who says, Oh, I will die for you. Really? Nobody is going to die for you. La antum ashaddu rahbatan fi sudurihim min Allah. You believers are more fearful with their chest, in their chest than Allah. Meaning they are more afraid of you than they are afraid of Allah. Like, you know, afraid of people than Allah. This is because they are people who do not understand. Because a person who fear people more than Allah, then his mind, his intellect is deficient at some level. How can he fear the one who is smaller and not the one who is greater? They will not find you all except within fortified cities or from behind walls. Their violence among themselves is severe. You think they are together, but their hearts are diverse. That is because they are people who do not reason. Again, sign of people who do not use reason is what? They are constantly in disagreements and conflicts, fighting with each other because they don't know how to work out solution. Ayah number 13, Surah Al-Hashr, there is like the example of those shortly before them. They tasted the bad consequence of their affairs and they will have a painful punishment. The hypocrites are like example of shaitan when he says to a man disbelief. But when he disbelieves, he says, indeed, I am disassociated from you. Indeed, I fear Allah, Lord of the worlds. What a liar he is. He does not actually fear Allah because if he did, he wouldn't have said the things he said to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the outcome for both of them is that they will be in the fire abiding eternally therein and that is the recompense of the wrongdoers. Bad friends, remember, they will be together in hellfire. So beware of the friends. Ya ayyuha lazina amanu taqullaha O you who have believed, fear Allah. And let every soul look to what it has put forth for tomorrow. Tomorrow is not the next day I'm talking about. Tomorrow means what you sent in the hereafter. This is today. Tomorrow after death. Life after death. Allah says, look at what you are sending forth for your life after death. Preparing for what? We are mostly concerned about next day, isn't it? We don't know whether we're going to be alive or not, but we are so concerned about that, isn't it? But taqullaha and fear Allah. Again, fear Allah, which we need at both sides, at the beginning and in the end, in order to prepare for the akhirah. Otherwise, we will slip. We cannot have istiqama. Begin with the fear of Allah. Continue with fear of Allah in order to remain steadfast. Indeed, Allah is acquainted with what you do. And be not like those who forgot Allah. So he made them forget themselves. A person, he forgets Allah who he has forgotten in reality. Himself. They are defiantly disobedient. You see, when a person forgets Allah, a person, he forgets that he is the servant of Allah. He does not even know himself. He does not even understand his own reality. When he is detached from Allah, then he becomes attached to other things. He is stuck in his uh, quicksand of sin. This is why a person must remember Allah the Most High and not forget Him. Anytime, you know, we all need to think about who is it that I think most about. What is it that occupies my mind, my thoughts, my feelings? 
whatever it is each time it comes to your mind replace that thought with a thought about allah subhanahu wa ta'ala remember allah at that time la yastawi ashabun nari wa ashabul janna not equal are the companions of the fire and the companions of fire uh, paradise janna ashabul jannati humul faizun the companion of jannah paradise they are attainer of success faizun people who will go to jannah they are faizun successful people in this world we say oh so and so degree they are successful they are so and so they are given some title but who are successful go those who are going to jannah ayah number 21 this is the ayah we were talking about how the mountain will shake law anzalna hazal qur'an ala jabal ra'aytahu khashi'an mutasaddi'an min khashyatillah wa tilka amsalu nadribuha lin nas la'allahum yatafakkarun if we had sent down this quran upon a mountain you would have seen it humbled and coming apart from fear of allah so this is what would happen to a mountain if quran was revealed on a mountain if the quran was given to a mountain to observe and to follow and how are we man is such that he reads the whole quran he is nearing it completion but the heart does not feel weighed down does not feel any pressure the hardness does not go away hardness of the heart i'm talking about the heart does not melt actions does not change situation does not improve then what kind of love and relationship with the quran is this the real impact of the quran is that it breaks you quran breaks your ego it crushes the idol of your nafs of your desire the idol of your desire it crushes your heart so all false idols are shattered and person is broken and then fixed for who for allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and these example we present to the people that perhaps they will give thought we all need to give thought to our state where is my heart what i am pursuing what is it that i love the most it is truly beneficial for me what is it that i am preparing for my tomorrow means for my death for my akhirah what is it that i am sending ahead for my death or akhirah again talking about the tomorrow is it good deeds that i am accumulating or is it something else that's occupying me so much so that i am forgetting allah check ourselves every individual varies check ourselves there's a hadith prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said the example of the believer and his death are like the example of a man who has three friends the first one says take what you want as you please take whatever you want the second one says i am with you but when you die i will leave you and the third one says i am with you and you will go with you so the first is his wealth take whatever you want of it use whatever you want the second is his family and children who says that we are with you but when you die you are going in your grave alone and the third is his deeds that says to a person i am with you and i'll go with you so what is it that we love the most generally it's our wealth and children for amal for action for doing good generally what do we say i have no time i'm busy i'm busy with my work my kids keep me busy my house work and so on so forth may allah have mercy upon us because it is only deeds that will go with a person in the grave that will accompany a person on the day of judgment wealth will be destroyed with the destruction of the earth 
and family will leave us in the grave isn't it we love our family everyone but they leave in the grave and they come back and on the day of judgment they will run away from us so who is it that we should be seeking allah subhanahu wa ta'ala only allah the last ayahs everybody i have a request if you can memorize this very beautiful ayahs you can recite in the salah and also you can recite in morning evening duas too who allah allazi la ilaha illa hu alimul ghaibi was shahada huwa ar rahmanur rahim هو الله الذي لا اله الا هو المؤمن الاس الملك القدوس السلام المؤمن المحيمن العزيز الجبار العزيز الجبار المتكبر سبحان الله اما يشركون هو الله الذي لا اله الا هو he is the allah other than whom there is no deity alimul ghaib wa shahada nur of the unseen and the witness who ar rahman ar rahim he is entirely merciful specially merciful over here 18 names and attributes of allah are mentioned his names are descriptive what are these names who allah allazi la ilaha illa hu is allah other than whom there is no deity al malik the sovereign al quddus pure as salam the perfection al mumin the bestower of faith al muhimin the overseer al aziz the exalted in mind might al jabbar the compeller al mutakabbir superior subhanallah ya ma yushrikun exalted is allah above whatever they associate with him so al quddus is the one of the names of allah mentioned here and prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam when he would be in ruku in sujood he would say subuhun quddusun rabbul malaikatu war ruh isn't it we recite this dua subuhun quddusun rabbul malaikatu war ruh as salam also name of allah mentioned over here after sala prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam would say allahumma anta as salam wa minka as salam tabarakta zal jilali bil ikram Al Aziz, also a name of Allah mentioned over here. Allah says, "Honor is my izar, pride is my cloak. Whoever views with me regarding one of them shall be torment." Meaning, Allah is one deserving of honor. So, whom we should honor to? Allah Swt. Allah Taala. Al Mutakabbir and Al Jabbar, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said. Recite this ayah on pulpit member. Was sama wa ta matawiyatun bi yamini subhanu wa taala amma yushrikun. And he said, Allah the Exalted will say, Anal mutakabbiru, Anal jabbaru, Anal mutaala, Anal malik. Allah will exalt himself that I am the jabbar, the compeller. I am the superior, superior. I am the sovereign. I am the highest. And Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he kept repeating himself. When he was on the member so much, the member shook, and Sahaba were afraid that he might fall. Al Mutakabbir is the most superior. Who Allah Al Qalik Al Bari Al Musawir. He is the Allah, the Creator, the Inventor, the Fashioner. Lahu Al Asma Al Husna. To him belong the best name, the most beautiful names. Yusab bihu lahu ma fi samawati wal ard. Whatever is in heavens and earth is exalting him. Everything is his creating, creation exalting Allah. Wa hu al Aziz ul Hakim. He is exalted might. Exalted might wise. There are some of the names of Allah, and here in particular, what is mentioned that He is the Creator, Inventor, Fashioner, meaning everything is His creation. He has fashioned, He has beautified, He has designed it 
so don't criticize the design of anything because allah is the designer he is the one who has fashioned it and also what we learn from this is that this quality is only for allah he alone is the creator he alone is the fashioner which is why we have been prohibited from drawing images imitating the creation of allah making them whether by hand or on a screen or through any means making them thinking of ourselves as a creator this is a major sin we learn that once prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he entered the house of aisha radhiyallahu anha he saw a thin curtain hanging on the wall and it had pictures on it and these pictures must have been of living things and the colors of his face underwent a change whose face color changed rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam he took hold of that curtain and he tore it and he said the most severe punishment for the people on the day of resurrection will be for those who try to imitate allah in the act of creation that i am also maker i am also fashioner doing this with pride with arrogance competing with allah this is something that is forbidden may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all true recognition understanding of his name so that we understand him correctly we worship him correctly we love him also the way we should love him because love is only possible when you know the other and loving allah is also only possible when a person comes to know of allah who is allah and how is it that we know allah through his beautiful and perfect names and attributes so here we end surah al hashr so try to memorize that ayas the last ayas of surah al hashr and you can recite in morning evening also it's there in bayya kanistain you can recite it and also in fortress of uh, muslim so here we start surah to saf and as we are going through surahs of just 28 those are short surahs and here even though we are trying to do short summary sometimes we are exceeding more time because sometimes it's not uh, like you know completely giving the half so let's start with surah al mumtahina then we'll continue with more surahs so here mumtahina this is surah number 60 60 and we'll see the period of revelation how many ayas are there surah al mumtahina is from imtihan 13 verses 1 3 and surah number 60 and again this is a madani surah madani surah usually teaches us etiquettes that's right umtahina the surah was revealed after the treaty of hudaybiyah and before the conquest of makkah so you understand after the treaty of hudaybiyah the surah was revealed after treaty of hudaybiyah and before the conquest of makkah and the things will be seeing in this surah are do not be friends those who are enemies of allah and the muslims prophet ibrahim al islam and his companion are on excellent example of believers exception to the prohibition of friendship is made with those unbelievers who had neither fought against the believers nor expelled them from their homes and the next thing is for women that become believers test their iman and if you find them truthful do not return them to their unbelieving husband women by oath of allegiance will see in this in islam is based on their commitment that they will not commit shirk they will not steal they will not commit adultery they will not kill their children they will not give any cause for scandal and they will not disobey prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam so details of three issues on which the surah provided guidance a strong exception is taken to the act of hatim bin abi balta who a little before the conquest of makka had a had sent a secret letter to quraish chief 
informing them of Prophet ﷺ intention to attack them. He had tried to inform the enemy of a very important war secret of Prophet ﷺ only for the safe, sake of safeguarding his family because his family was in Mecca. So he wanted to do a favor to Quraysh. And uh, Quraysh would have, like, you know, many of the Quraysh would have been killed, many of whom would have rendered great service of, of Islam afterward. The gain which we had to cure from conquering Makkah peacefully would have been lost. All of the serious losses would have resulted only because of the Muslim had wanted to safeguard his family. But Allah subhanahu wa ta through Wahi inform them that we'll see that and also in the second thing we see the serious social problem is addressed which was agitating the mind of Muslims and third thing Prophet ﷺ has been instructed to ask a woman who accept Islam to pledge and to refrain from the evil thing. Let's begin Surah Al-Mumtahina Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Ya ayyuhallazina amanu O oh, you who have believed, do not take my enemies and your enemies as allies, extending to them affection while they have disbelieved in what came to you of the truth. Having driven out the Prophet and yourself only because you believe in Allah and your Lord, if you have come out for jihad in my cause and seeking means to my approval, take them not as friends. You confine to them affection, but I am most knowing of what you have concealed and what you have declared. And whoever does it among you have certainly strayed from soundness of the way. The surah is Madani surah. And we learn that after Sule Hudaybiyah, Prophet ﷺ learned of the treachery of the mushriki, their violation of the treaty, how? That they had help and finance and attack against the allies of Muslims. And this was clear treachery of the treaty. So Prophet ﷺ demanded from Mushrikeen of Makkah blood money. And also termination of their alliances. Or else they should consider the treaty of Hudaybiyah to be terminated. But the Mushrikeen refused refused to compile and so Prophet ﷺ intended to secretly march towards Makkah in order to take over Makkah. Why? Because now clearly Mushrikeen had proven that firstly they were not going to spare any effort in inflicting harm against the Muslim. And even when Muslims have a treaty with them, they are not going to respect that. So Prophet ﷺ, he decided to secretly march towards Makkah. Why secretly? Because if Mushrikeen learned uh, of Prophet ﷺ arrival, what would they do? They would raise weapons against Muslim and this would lead to great bloodshed in the city, holy city of and the like sacred land. And so the Prophet ﷺ did not even inform the Muslims about it what the intention was. But just a few days before march to Makkah, the Prophet ﷺ informed the Muslims. So there was a companion, as I told you in uh, intro, Hatim uh, Abi Balta, who was a Badri Sahabi. He was also a Muhajib and he had relatives in Makkah. So what happened? He sent a letter to Mushrikeen with his information in order to do a favor to them. So that in exchange, they would protect his family who were still in Makkah. And Hatim Radiallahu did that while being certain that Allah will get victory to Prophet Sallallahu He did this not with the intention of betraying the Muslims. He did this only to protect his family. And he was certain that Allah, his plan, nothing was going to cause failure to his plans. So what happened? Prophet ﷺ was informed about this letter through Wahi, revelation. And Prophet ﷺ sent Hazrat Ali Radiallahu and few other companions to catch up with the caravan and find the woman who was taking the letter with her. And so the letter was intercepted. It 
they never made it to Makkah. It was intercepted. However, this ayah were revealed clarifying to the Muslim about their priorities, what their priority should be, how they should be loyal to, because over here, Hatim Radiallahu gave preference to his personal benefit over the benefit of deen. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed this ayah that it is made clear that for a believer, what is it, the standard of friendship? What is the basis of love? Who is it that we should befriend? Who is it that we shouldn't be befriend? Those who oppose Allah and his messenger. They are not worthy friendship. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warns the believers that here let's see the next ayah. If they gain dominance over you, they would be to you as enemies. Enemies and extend against you their hands and their tongues with evil and they wish you would disbelieve. Meaning, never expect them to help you. You are trying to be friendly with them. To whom it is said this thing? Hatim bin Balta. Because he is trying to be helping them and friendly with them. To whom? To the people of Makkah, Mushrikeen of Makkah. They are never going to help you. Even if you show favor to them, as soon as they have a chance to harm you, they are not going to spare any effort. Why are you doing this anyway? To defend your family? So Allah is asking in ayah number 2, Why are you doing this? Never will your relatives or your children benefit you. The day of resurrection, He will judge between you and Allah of what you do is seen. And means Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave an example to the believers to take a lesson from. For us also, it's a lesson for us. Ayah number four, there has already been for you an excellent pattern in Ibrahim al-Islam and those with him. When they said to their people, indeed we are disassociated from you and from whatever you worship other than Allah, we have denied you and there has appeared between us and your animosity and hatred forever until you believe in Allah alone. Except for the saying of Ibrahim to his father, I will surely ask forgiveness for you. Because he had promised his father, he still wanted guidance for his father. So he made dua. I have not power to do for you anything against Allah, our Lord, upon you. We have relied and to you, we have returned and to you is the destination. Rabbana alayka tawakkalna walayka ambana walayka al -masir. So it means to the Allah is the destination. Ibrahim al-Islam and those with him, the believers with him, they prayed, you know, this dua. Rabbana la tajalna fitna talil lazina kafaru baqfir lana rabbana inna kantal azizul hakim. Our Lord, make us not object of torment for the disbelievers and forgive us, our Lord. Indeed, it is you who is the exalted in might and wise. So, again, in ayah number five, there's a dua. Lakat kana lakum fihi uswatun hasana. There was certainly been for you in them an excellent pattern for anyone whose hope is in Allah and the last day and whoever turns away, then indeed Allah is free of need and praiseworthy. We see over here, Ibrahim al-Islam and his father, when his people showed open animosity, then what happened? Ibrahim al-Islam was not naive over there. He did not take the enemy as a friend. Rather, what happened, you know, he left those who showed animosity to them. And over here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving us this lesson that those who oppose you openly, then don't be deceived by them. Don't take them as friends. You know, here it's own father and their friends, you know. Don't show favor on them. Why? Because you will be harmed. You will suffer in dunya and akhirah. And so over here, we are clearly told that the person who fears the meeting with Allah, he should look into his priorities. What are his priorities? Who is it that he takes his friend? And who is it that he takes as enemy? And the person who wishes to be saved from humiliation on the day of judgment, then he should strive to obey Allah and his messenger. And then Allah gives hope also. So make friends only to those who are in obedience to Allah. Those who are in disobedience, leave them. Perhaps Allah will put between you and those to whom 
you have been enemies among them affection because hearts changes don't compromise on your faith for the sake of other people but if you remain firm you never know their heart might change towards you but if they believe you know whenever if something is going wrong don't get carried away with your friends or the people be content what allah has said be firm on it and allah is competent and allah is forgiving and merciful a number 8 allah does not forbid you from those who do not fight you because of the religion and do not expel you from your homes from being righteous towards them and acting justly towards them indeed allah loves those who act justly so those who are just with you what should you do be just with them also so over here we learn of another category which is of those of non muslims who do not oppose you who do not show hatred to you you know some non muslim they don't show any hatred any enmity any thing don't treat them as enemies if you do that it would be foolishness then what is it that you should do with them do to them as they do to you meaning they are good to you you also good to them in return a number 8 mark it down it's very important because these days that's the things going on so allah does not forbid you from those who do not fight and you because of religion and do not expel you from your homes from being righteous towards them and acting justly towards them indeed allah loves those who act justly very beautiful ayah so you have to understand this thing allah only forbids you from those who fight you because of religion and expel you from your homes and aid you in expulsion forbids that you make a list of them whoever makes a list of them then it is those who are wrong doers so we see that people have been divided into three categories over here one group is of those people who believe what is it that we should do with them these are the people whom we should love for the sake of allah regardless of their color status race background doesn't matter we love them for the sake of allah whoever has iman that's it we going to be friends with them the another group is of those people who disbelieve who oppose you who hate you openly show hatred and animosity they don't stop at any length in order to harm you but they hate your deen so what should you do take them as friends no way no defend yourselves from them never be deceived by them and the third group is those non muslims who live in peace with you you are good to them they are good to you so you also live in peace with them and if you think about it if they have favored you in any way if they have sheltered you not expelled you then you should not treat them as enemy you should return their favor whatever the favor they did just return them and we see what a just and balanced religion islam is it's like you know it disciplines your feelings you cannot just show hatred to whom you want show love to whom you want no even love hate friendship animosity this is also dictated by allah's law let's move on number 10 o oh, you who have believed when the believing women come to you as emigrants examine them allah is most knowing as to their faith allah is most knowing as to their faith meaning test their faith because if men when they come their faith is obvious if they are coming to masjid and everything their faith is obvious but a woman if she does hijra then remember that you have to test them however don't try to test the state of their heart because allah is most knowing of their faith so you have to see what is on the apparent and if you know them to the believers they do not return them to the disbelievers now they came did the hijra you can't return them we learn that a treaty of hudaybia it stipulated that mushrikeen they set a condition 
that if any rajul if any man immigrates from makka to madina he must be returned to makka he must be sent to makka so prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he took advantage of the letter of the law so what he do any man you know that come to madina he sent him back however if any woman came doing hijra he did not send her back because he took advantage of the letter of the law he said the treaty says rajul not a person but rajul and rajul is specifically for who for a man so over her believing women are being protected that once they do hijra if they come then don't send them back to the enemy why because they are not lawful wives for them meaning if they are married they are not lawful any more, more for their former husband not they are lawful husband for them so don't send them but give the disbelievers what they have spent meaning if the woman leaves with her mahar then she shouldn't keep the mahar she should return that mahar to that man even if he is a non muslim this shows us that how a person has to be honest with regard to financial matters even when dealing with non muslims and there is no blame upon you if you marry them when you have given their compensation why because their previous marriage has been terminated and hold not to marriage bonds with disbelieving women but ask for what you have spent and let them ask for what they have spent meaning return the mahar this is the judgment of allah he judges between you and allah is knowing and wise so we see over here that once in a couple of example husband and wife if one embraces islam and other refuses to embrace islam they remain on idolatry on kufr then marriage also no longer valid it is no longer no, no longer valid this ayas this aya make it clear isn't it but uh, these days people they go and do fatwa shopping and this and that maybe they are trying to make the another person muslim allah wala ayah number 11 if you have lost any of your wives to the disbelievers meaning any woman goes to mushrikin then you subsequently obtain something then give those whose wife has gone the equivalent of what they had spent and fear allah in whom you are believers and number 12 o prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam when believing women come to you pledging to you they will not associate anything not doing shirk with allah nor will they steal nor will they commit unlawful sexual intercourse means zina nor will they kill their children nor will they bring forth a slander they have invented between their arms and legs nor will they disobey you in what is right then accept their pledge and last thing ask forgiveness for them of allah indeed allah is forgiving and merciful so over here bay is mentioned which means that even when a woman becomes a muslim when woman accepts islam she should be aware of what she is believing in and over here we see that muslims when they would immigrate to uh, madina prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam they would give a bay and the men when they would uh, take bay pledge of allegiance they would give that to rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam they would put their hand men only men but women they only say verbally okay ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu oh you have believed do not make allies of people with whom allah has become angry they have despaired of reward in the hereafter just as the disbelievers are disbelievers have despaired of meeting in the inhabitants of grave so here why would you be friend people who oppose allah and his messenger to such an extent that they have angered allah how can you love such people and compromising your religion for them do you love your friend so much that you compromise your religion no you are not going to do that meaning they don't believe in akhirah 
they don't believe that e ever those who have died will return to them so when they don't believe in akhirah everything for them is this dunya this worldly life how can you be loyal to such people in a way that you compromise your religion and you compromise your priorities for these people if you do that then your decision will also be revolved around worldly benefits then you will suffer in the akhirah so be careful about those whom you give your heart to like you know don't love anyone so much that you compromise akhirah it happens with anyone it can be your own children friends family so on and so forth the first priority is our own religion because we have to die and we have to go and assemble one day in front of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may allah save us all protect us all so here we end surah al mumtahina rest will continue in next class subhanakallahumma bihamdika nashhadu an la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilaik